hi everyone, I'm John White. Today's expert could not make it. So today we're going to talk about Spooky 2 software. We're going to go step by step with how to install it and how to run programs on the generators. I encourage you all to ask me questions along the way. The, the questions that you have may be questions that other people have as well. So you'll be saving them the effort and, uh, and everyone will get to know what the answers are. So just ask them and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and we'll see how we go. Well, today is a special day in China. Today is Mid-Autumn Day. Now, the Mid-Autumn uh, Festival, as it's known, has got several legends tied to it. It's the middle of the autumn. It's down the slippery slope towards winter. There's some beautiful stories. There's one about... In ancient times, ten suns were in the sky. And it was very hot, <laughs> as, as you'd expect with ten suns. And this hero, it's not Superman, is uh, uh, Hao Yi, um, who was extremely strong. He shot down, I guess he shot them down with arrows, nine of those suns and left the tenth one up there. He later married a beautiful and kind-hearted woman called uh, Chang Er, Chang Er. And he lived a happy life, but one day, the Queen of Heaven presented this hero, Ho Yi, a, a mixture which, if he drank it, would help him to rise to the heavens and become a god. This is in recognition of what he's done in the past of shooting down nine stars. Um, and the, um, the hero took this mixture home and asked a Chang Er to keep it. But a nasty person got to know about this, broke into their home and demanded that he be given this mixture. He wanted to go up to the heavens. But uh, Chang Er refused to do that and she drank it herself. And she rose to the heavens and she became the moon. Um, now, Every year, Chang, uh, sorry, um, the superhero, he missed Chang Er a lot. He missed his wife. And so each autumn, which is the anniversary of when she went to the heavens, he placed food on tables. And this started the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> so the celebration of the autumn festival where people put food out and uh, the mooncakes as well. There's other, other stories as well, um, but I guess the focus today is on the Spooky 2 software, so we'll dive into that now. Uh, what I'll do, I will... put a few programs, and then I will share my screen. No questions so far, so I guess you knew the Autumn Festival story already. So share my screen. And here we have it, the Spooky 2 setup. I'm going to be demonstrating the very latest version that is out there. It is available at cancerclinic.co.nz. The version which is available at spooky2.com downloads section may be this version as well, I'm not 100% sure. But they, um, they try and keep up with me. I like to have the very latest up so people can test it and give feedback so I can constantly improve spooking. So the very first thing we're going to do is install it. So we just double click on the file that was downloaded. And the files that are in the installation package are extracted. I should use English because I find it English easier than Danish. Okay, welcome to the Spooky 2 setup program. It's just telling me the program will install Spooky 2 on my computer. No questions need to be answered. Just click on next. This is the license agreement. You're agreeing to that uh, we are not responsible for any damage or injuries that are caused 
for the use of the program or the package the hardware as well. And we do recommend to see your physician or other healthcare professional if you think you may have a health problem. Okay, so that's the general user a licensing agreement. Just click on yes and then next. It's asking me where do I want to put Spooky2? Well, I'll put Spooky2 here. I think no, I'll change it. What's today? Oh, I'll call it the version of Spooky number. So it was going to be Spooky2. I've, I've added some numbers to indicate it's this version of Spooky that's being installed. You can install multiple versions of Spooky on the same computer. And I click on next. What's happening is copying the files from the temporary folder into the Spooky2 folder. <clears throat> There's a lot of presets in here, a lot of files. So it takes a little while. As I say, if you've got any questions through the uh, course of the seminar, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'll check to make sure that the live stream is still working. Oh, how can I check? Oh yes, I think it's live stream. Yeah, I think it's live stream. Okay. And we're going through the, all the programs. Now the version of Spooky changes very often. Usually it's about one, seven, one or two days. It's not the formal release. The formal release we try and keep just once a month or maybe once every two months. But as things are improved, I like to let other people test it for themselves, give the feedback whether they like different features, how things can be improved. Okay, it's finished the installation. Now you can opt to launch the program, which means start the program. So I'll, I'll start the program straight away. Let's see what all the defaults are. Now it's searching for a generator. If it's taking a long time, you can just click on the spooky icon and then it will skip the detection sequence. I haven't got any connect, uh, generators with me because this is an impromptu center. So I'm just going to run everything in emulation or test mode. It's asking me no generators were detected. Exit and install drivers? No. I don't want to exit and install drivers. Now the database is loading. While they're loading, I'll take a quick squid. This is the molecular weight frequencies. Molecular weight are for, uh, for compounds, substances. Base pair frequencies are for living things, such as bugs, viruses, funguses, parasites, anything. And this is the non-human base pair database. And we're almost there. Now we're loading the encyclopedia. We'll be covering the encyclopedia very shortly. It's an online reference for health conditions. Very valuable. Okay, so this is the screen you see when Spooky2 first starts up. It's got some tabs along the top. Move it down a little bit. Presets, programs, settings, control, system, internet, and errors. We'll be going through each one and explaining how it works. Now I said at the beginning of the summer, I'm going to show you how to load a program and run it. Now the easiest way to run Spooky is through the presets. 
three sets of dung over back for you. You can click on any of these any of these categories and subcategories or presets will then be displayed. When we first install Spooky, we recommend that you run a detox program of some sort. Now, there are detox programs in the database, but it's so much easier to run a preset, which has set everything up already. And you can see there's detox here. So you click on detox. Now you're presented with an option of how you're going to apply the detox preset. You can do it with a coil, which is like a giant lollipop you place against your body. You can do it in contact mode, which is using tens pads, hand cylinders, even a foot bath. You can use your cold laser. You can use plasma which is our Spooky Central, our Spooky Plasma as well. You can do it by remote, and you can do it by scalar. We're going to choose our remote. Remote is our most popular method of applying frequencies because you don't need to be tethered or connected to a computer or a generator. You can just go about your day-to-day -day activities Unimpeded. Okay, so we've got four choices. Choices are great. We've got a detox maintenance by Jeff Kazor. We've got three terrain protocols by Brian Yamamoto. I suggest you run as a first preset, a terrain preset. The regular one can, is, a, is a very complete, complete full system scrub. It starts off with the, lar with the small pathogens and goes up to the large ones. So it starts off with the viruses, and then goes down to the parasites and heavy metals. So if you want a general one, you click on terrain. Now, if you're like the more than 50% of the population of humanity who have amalgam or mercury in their mouths in the form of fillings, I suggest you use the a terrain minus mercury preset. The difference between this and the regular terrain preset is this one does not have the mercury removal programs in it. Once mercury is released into your body, your body can then um, react quite strongly if you have got mercury in your mouth. There's a lot of mercury for your body to get rid of, so I suggest you use this one if you have metal fillings. There are people that are compromised through their condition. Unfortunately, their immune system is not functioning adequately, their organs aren't firing on all cylinders. In which case I recommend you do the non-violent terrain protocol. For each of these protocols and other pre uh, presets that are within Spooky, there are notes. Please read the notes because it gives fine detail on how to use each preset. Some presets need to be used a certain way, so it's important to read the notes. Okay, well, I'm going to choose for myself the terrain minus mercury, because I do have amalgam filling still. The next step is to go to the control. So go from presets, you skip those two and go straight to the control. On the left hand side, you'll see some red boxes. This is in test mode, so there are a lot of boxes. But if you have a generator connected, each generator will appear as a red box.
the number of the generator, if you are lucky enough to have a generator X, will be displayed on the top of the generator on the display screen. So I'm going to choose generator number three, which in test mode is a generator X. You'll notice that nothing, no programs have appeared. There's a very good reason. It's because I had not allowed the generators to overwrite. So when you select a preset, like the terrain minus Mercury, when you go to control, you allow the generator to be overwritten. This allows the generator memory contents to be overwritten. It's a safeguard to prevent it from happening accidentally. So I've selected that. Now I select the generator. And now you can see the programs appear. Assuming that you've got your fingernails in speaker remote and you've got the remote connected onto your speaker boost on the VN port, you're ready to start. You just click the start button. Now for the next 11 days, Spooky 2 will step through different presets and apply frequencies in exactly the correct manner. The optimum um, order to make your body stronger and better able to handle the programs that you'll be running later to directly attack the pathogens that are making your life miserable. So that has shown you the 101 uh, instructions for Spooky. How to choose a preset, load the preset into a generator, and then how to start it. At any time, you can pause the generator, you can stop the generator, it's all, it's all pretty easy. So if you ignore all this tricky bit around here and all the other tabs, Spooky2 isn't that difficult to use. It's when you want to go to the advanced levels and you can take advantage of the features that Spooky2 can provide that things can become complicated. But I recommend that you take things. I'm familiar with loading a preset into a generator and running it. And then when you feel brave, take the next step forward. Spooky2 is a multi-generator system. It can have as many as 127 generators. And so you can start a program on one generator and then you can do something else to a different generator by clicking on the other generator and loading programs into there. That generator number two would not affect the functioning of generator number three. Let's show you how that's done. I'll choose a different preset. I want to get back to the beginning of the presets, so I click on the home icon. It takes me to the beginning. Now let's say, uh, if I had more gallons. I click on the Morgellons folder and I've got the support and Morgellons in line. So I've got these two options to choose from. I can click on one preset. All the parameters are loaded automatically. I'll go and show you the documentation just in a moment. 
Remember, we choose the preset, then we skip straight to the control. Allow generator overrides. Pick a generator. We'll go for number two. And it's been loaded in. Then I can start. And this preset will look after itself. If I clicked on generator number three, you can see it's still on the first step of the first frequency of this preset chain. It's not being affected by generator number two. Spooky2 was the first Rife software to provide multi-generator support and it just continues to, go, to grow stronger and more capable. Any file that's in the presets area, which has got PDF as an extension, like this one here, is a document. You just click on it once and the document will load. And you'll find within the document details which explain in more detail than the notes how to use the preset. You can see how complicated the programs are that it steps through. So presets make it much easier for users. The author of the presets has already done the work for you. So all we need to do is select it and run it. If you want to go up one folder within the presets, you can click this arrow up and you can finally work your way up to the top. There's a lot of presets here, even presets for biofeedback. We'll be going through that later on. Well, let's go to the next tab. You may recall I told you you can select a preset, jump the other two tabs and go straight to control. You know, some presets are empty. They don't have any programs and that's intentional. It sets up the generator to be optimized for the application that you want. You can find the empty or show presets at the bottom here. So if you click on there, you're provided the option of how you're going to use Spooky. Again, whether it's in contact mode, asthma, remote, or scalar. There's also options for foot bath, Spooky audio, which is our tiny little speaker, Spooky coil, there's a couple of ones for, well, there's one for speaker call, one for cold laser as well. So we can choose, for example, a plasma preset. We know we're going to use our spooky plasma, for example. Now, spooky plasma is a fantastic device. It's still, I think, the only plasma device that can operate from 100 kilohertz all the way up to three and a half megahertz. Most other plasma devices either work at a single frequency, which is called a carrier, which is a very awful way of using of transmitting frequencies, or they're very restricted to the frequency range, and they can only go to a certain frequency, which is below quite often the frequencies required for healing. So we'll choose plasma. Now we've got six presets available. Gosh, they're all written by me. The last two letters denotes the initials of the author of the preset. Generator X can work both online or offline. Offline meaning it doesn't need to be connected to a computer. And so the first two presets are ideal for Generator X if you want to use Generator X without a computer. It's quite cool, isn't it? You don't need to have your great thumping, noisy computer next to you by your bedside while you're doing treatments. 
and generator X is perfectly quiet. There's no Gordon trans or anything. And there's a spooky plasma advanced treatment and healing, a fixed carrier. Spooky plasma can have a fixed carrier like the lesser life machines, but it's not as good as applying frequencies directly. And there's also a variable duty preset. Variable duty is good for applying a frequency range to your body. We'll choose the plasma advanced. So I'll click on there. When you click on this preset, you'll notice that there's no programs loaded. And then notes, you'll see that it's, um, uh, let's see. Oh gosh, <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> um, it's, uh, the, the general notes uh, that it's ideal for killing frequencies, but it's good for general use as well. Best to use with a Ferentron tube, even though a straight tube is good. The Ferentron tube, you see, is a more concentrated field. And so it tends to have a better ability at, at killing pathogens. And a technical description of how it works. You do not need to know the finer details to use them. So there we go, we've, got, we've chosen this one, but there's no program, so what do we do now? Well, you'll see there's a programs tab here. Let's add some programs, shall we? So we click on programs. Now, with this release of Spooky, we have 55,400 programs. So there's plenty to choose from. So, let's have a think. I'll just do a general parasite one, shall I? Parasite. This is the search icon. So I'll click on the word on the icon. And these are all the programs which are pertaining to parasite. Let's have a look down there. Eggs of worms. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Now, if you're if you're browsing through the programs as we are now, <coughs> excuse me. There's an option here: search icon with plus. That means search within the encyclopedia to find out where the text can be found. So I think, gosh, I might have dyspepsia. So I'll put that in the search and I see all the dyspepsia programs there. But I want to have a look in the dictionary, in the encyclopedia, and see just what it is. So I click on this one. You go belching. Belching is the, the is most often a normal process, especially if you're a guy. But it's saying symptoms such as dyspepsia, so dyspepsia can cause belching. You can use the scroll bar on the right here to find other entries on dyspepsia. Okay, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease for children. And dyspepsia has got a role in that as well. And so it's a gut parasite. And it can be, it's also associated with heartburn. There's a lot of information within the encyclopedia. And so I encourage you to make use of it. You can choose a search term here and then click on this icon here next to the program search is this one here. It's a lot of information about dyspepsia. There's a stomach problem called dyspepsia, which can cause the heartburn. Indigestion. 
peptic ulcer disease, also associated with dyspepsia. Well, that sounds like the program for me, guys. Let's do it. So again, I'll sit for dyspepsia and I'll choose from these programs which ones to run. Let's have a look at them. I've got the general database programs for dyspepsia, which are these ones here. Ones specifically for dyspepsia and some for hyperacidity and also indigestion. You'll see that these ones down here are MW. That stands for molecular weight. That comes from the molecular weight database. And so all of these are products, compounds, artificial drugs, and some natural compounds, essential oils as well. But all I can see in this list are drugs. These drugs are created to, pro, to uh, reduce the symptoms, <laughs> usually, of diseases. Very seldom do they actually resolve their problem. Okay, so like I said, so some of these drugs may, or compounds may be from natural origins. So it pays to read through each one. And so you can, when you click on one, you can see a lot of detail in this area here of the drug that you selected. It also gives you some cautionary notes at the end as well, usually. Take with food. So it may cause some form of tummy upsets if you took them on an empty stomach. So now I'll keep away from the MW1s because I've got ones which is specifically for dyspepsia. We have three programs here. You can double click on each one to load them into this area here. You can also mark several at the same time by holding down the shift button and then pressing the second one and then click on the plus and all the ones get added there. Okay. The estimated total run time is one hour 41 minutes. Generally you don't keep the program loops too long. It's getting a bit long now. Generally we, we keep it around one hour duration and then we loop it. But two hours is okay. There's no hard and fast rule. So we have the preset already loaded. We've now selected the programs that are going to run with the preset. All we need to do now is choose the generator, which, go, which is in the control tab. We'll overwrite the generator, which means allow it to be written to the generator. And then we'll choose the generator. I'll go for number seven, lucky seven. All I need to do now is click start. That's it. I'm now being treated for dyspepsia. Well, I'm not because I haven't got a generator connected. But if I had, I would be. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Back on the presets tab, there's a search option. There's a lot of presets, a lot of presets there. And so we added a facility where you can search them. Makes life a lot easier. Well, let's say I wanted to treat a cancer. Let's see what presets are available for cancer. 79 presets have been found. I can choose from any one of these.
these two are for scans. Cancer one call. These are part of a larger preset. Okay. Let's say I've got a generator X and I want to use it offline because I don't like noises. So I'll choose the GX offline cancer. When I select that preset, the location of the preset file is shown at the top. It's worthwhile to have a glance at that just to check it's the type of preset you want to run. It's under preset collections, cancer, plasma, offline for generator X. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to use my brand new spooky plasma to get rid of my cancer. So that's what I've chosen. Then I skip straight to the control tab because you can see that there's already a program loaded here. Cancer frequencies, it's a custom frequency, specially designed to hit cancer hard. At this point, we go to the control tab, allow a generator to be overwritten, and I'll choose a free generator. Generator number X, I'll choose number 15. For your system, the numbers will be different because generators choose their own number. And then you just click start. The waveforms will upload into the generator and then the generator will start. This is an online mode. But remember I told you that this preset is also for offline. So I've loaded the program into this channel. I can load it into the generator. Now it's an offline mode, so there's nothing here. If you've already loaded programs into here, you will see them next to the number of the memory location that they're located. And so you, you choose an empty one. Choose the first one. So I'll double click there and I'll click save. If, it was, if I did have a generator connected, the waveforms and the program, <laughs> it's a bird saying hello, a message will come up saying loading the program into the generator. Once that message has disappeared, you can disconnect your generator and then next time you power up, you've got the program there ready to run with the programs already set up. Magic, <laughs> nice and simple. Okay, so we've covered the presets, we've covered the programs. Let's have a quick glance at the settings tab. Now the settings tab is for advanced users. If you want to change any of the running parameters of the generator, you go to this tab. Now it is very complicated. I do recommend users to load presets and use those rather than changing the settings. It's easy to get confused. It's part of the learning curve and the path to restoring your own health. All the running parameters for the generators can be altered on this tab. Because Spooky2 is such an advanced system with a lot of power under the hood, there's a lot of options here. Don't worry too much about the parameters. They're not necessary to learn. You can stick with the presets and the control tab. 
is used as two tabs. Sometimes you may need to use a programs tab. In particular, if you have a health issue, which is not common and not addressed in any of those presets. In that case, you'll choose a preset or an empty preset and add programs to it. Add the programs that you want to run, which are targeted specifically to your condition. The system tab sets global parameters, things that affect the software in every generator can be altered here. You've got general settings. You can select to display the port number on generators when they're stopped. You can choose high CPU priority. If your computer is very slow and you want Spooky to take more of the processing power, you can choose this option. You can write a program log so you can go back and see what Spooky was doing at any particular time. You can enable system sounds. System sounds are speech so that you can have uh, the, a person talked to you, for example. Are you sure you want to exit? Like that. No. So when you select the um, sounds, it's voice. You can have beeps only. <laughs> No, okay, I'll keep it to voice. You can choose to hide the internet tab, which you haven't shown yet. If you hide it, it disappears. There's different ways of performing biofeedback, and you can choose how you want the average to be calculated. You can automatically cl close the control panel, I do not recommend you choose that. You can disable the tooltips. Tooltips are the yellow box that show when the mouse hovers over some control. It explains in more detail what the option does. In this case, it disables the handy pop-up hints in Spooky. You have to restart Spooky after you disable the tooltips. And there's other options as well. You can choose which databases are loaded. If you know that you will never use the DNA database or the base pair database, you can deselect them. Yeah. It means Spooky loads a little bit faster and doesn't consume so much memory. You can set global wobble options here. The Spooky pulse maximum and minimum beats per minute and the frequency conversions for the databases. All of these are advanced options. None of them are necessary to know to use Spooky successfully. On the internet tab, you'll see that there are some places you can come and visit. You can visit us at the forum on Facebook, and you can view our videos on YouTube. There's more specific sites here that you can click and then go straight to. For example, if you wanted to buy a Spooky 2 product and you've forgotten where to go to, you can just click on sales and then the Spooky 2. Ah, uh, gosh. Oh, you know why I can't do it? It's because I'm in China. I haven't enabled VPN. There's Spooky2reviews.com. I wonder if I can get on there. I'll give it a try.
Here we go. Oh, I've had success from London here. Now, Squeaky Two Reviews is a great site for seeing how other people have solved their health issues. And you can search here for a multitude of conditions. Fall back. Okay, so I search for back and I'm going to search for all these case histories. Fibromyalgia, isn't it terrible? And this person found relief after 15 minutes, after years of pain. So the solutions are out there, you just need to find them. And speaking to makes it easier by providing the links in the internet tab. If Spooky2 has got any errors, if a generator is being a little bit naughty, a plug isn't connected in tightly, or you've lost your power, you'll see errors come up here. If it's a newer version of Spooky2, the announcement will be spoken, the voice will say, an error has been detected and that announcement will be repeated every minute as a reminder for something that needs attention. If it's a USB problem, for example, if a USB port was disconnected briefly, Spooky2 will recover from that fault after the USB is reconnected. So that's the basics of the Spooky2 software. We've covered presets, how to run them. We've also covered how to load programs and how to run them. There's two sides to Spooky. There's the treatment side and there's the biofeedback side as well. There's two different ways that you can perform biofeedback with Spooky2. The Spooky Pulse and there's also Generator X. I've clicked on the home icon in the presets tab and it's taken me to the top of the menu. At the very top, you'll see biofeedback. This holds all the biofeedback presets. Again, spooky, making things a little bit easier. So I'll click on there. Now, I'm assuming that you've got a generator X. That's our latest generator, which has got biofeedback built into it. It makes things a lot easier and a lot faster. So I'll click on Generator X. And I've got these biofeedbacks to choose from. Let's say I'm in a hurry. I'm going to the movies. So I haven't got much time. I want to do just a quick biofeedback scan. So I choose the fast biofeedback scan option. The notes, which are with it, it says it's a fast generic contact mode biofeedback preset for generator X. The notes ex explains how to connect your TENS pads, if you're using TENS pads, which we do recommend because if you used hand cylinders, the grip that you have on those cylinders will affect the results. If you grip more tightly, more current will flow and the signal will change. So TENS pads are sticky things you stick on your body and you put wires onto them. These connect to the output of the generator. So I'll do a fast biofeedback scan. Click on control. Allow override of the generator. And I'll choose a generator X, which I'll choose number 11. 
I will then make sure that the wires are connected onto generator number 11. You'll see there's no frequencies loaded here, but don't panic, everything is okay. Because biofeedback is at the bottom here. These parameters will determine how the generator will perform the biofeedback. And instead of clicking a star up here, you click scan. So let's do it. It's telling me that Spooky Tour is in test mode. Results will be invalid and should not be saved. That means it's, we're faking it. <laughs> it's not real. You click on OK or that message will disappear once this countdown has finished. The countdown gives you time to settle down properly. And get yourself comfortable. And the scan has started. See how the other generators have paused when the scan is running. Oops, you'll see that in the system tab, there is an option to pause generators during biofeedback. This ensures that the pure signal, the only signal that's being produced in the area of the spooky tree cut is from the biofeedback generator. If you wanted to continue with the other generators, then you deselect that option. Imagine you're doing a biofeedback on yourself and you're also doing remote treatments on yourself. Your biological response will be not only through the frequencies which have been applied using the contact mode, which is the TENS pad, but also from the remote. So it's a very good feature to enable and this is why it's enabled by default. Your body is only doing that one frequency, not frequencies from other generators. You'll notice that the generator number is on the top of the boxes. At the bottom, there's a certain number and a percentage. That gives an indication of how far through that particular program the generator um, is. So we know that generator number seven, for example, is 21% through the program. And generator number three is almost finished, it's 85%. As the generator is doing this by feedback, the frequency that is being applied is shown here. Measurements that it's recording are here. They're also shown here. And the graph of the signal is shown here. Because this is an emulation mode, it's all over the place. Generally, the graph is more stable with perhaps a slow climb or slow fall, and a few blips along the way. And the blips are generally an indication of a hit. During the course of the scan, the current duration is shown there at the top. Now the estimated total runtime is shown zero, but that's only for programs. For biofeedbacks, the estimated duration is shown at the bottom here in the biofeedback section. And that is seven minutes, just over seven minutes. Because Spooky2 is a multi generator system, we do not need to sit and wait and twiddle our thumbs during this demonstration while the scan is taking place, because we still have a few minutes to go. 
or you can go to other generators and see what the status is. Yellow means paused. And you can see that it's stopped at that frequency. The frequency is zero from the generator. With zero volts out, everything is stopped. Okay. While the bar feedback is being run, I'll stop my share and see if there's any questions. It's unbelievable. No questions. That's one of two things. It means, or one of three things. It could mean that I didn't give instructions properly on how to ask questions. It could mean that my explanations are so good that no one's got questions, which is highly unlikely. What means anyone's fallen asleep, which is probably the most likely cause. Just a reminder, if anyone has any questions, please type them underneath the video that's in Facebook and I will answer them uh, online. If you have registered on SAMA, just type it in the chat section and I'll answer them directly. But we're getting close to the end of the SAMA. So I will share the screen again and see how the biofeedback is coming along. I'll click on the biofeedback channel and the results have come up. Now these are the hits that Spooky has detected. What is a hit? A hit is a frequency that your body has reacted to. Usually, it is the pathogen which is causing this reaction. The pathogen has been targeted by this particular frequency or each of these frequencies that are displayed here. And, has, and, they have, and, and their reaction has provided a body. Once you've come to this point here, you can save these as a program. You do that by clicking on this icon at the top. It's good to give the program a name. So the default is by feedback and the date and the time. And at the very least, you can put your name there and maybe uh, where, where the tens pads were applied. So across lower back. Okay, this is all fake by the way, it's not real, but it's for demonstrations only. The hit frequencies have already been loaded and the description you can give, you can add to the notes here of the program, but I'll just leave it as it is and I'll save the program. Okay. So now, if you go to programs, and I search for back. There's the program I just created now, at the very end. It's in the biofeedback database. I now want to run this program, so I double click it. Actually, the first thing I'd do is choose a preset to run it. So let's do it. Start from the beginning. I'm going to choose a shell preset. I want a preset that's empty. And I'm going to load in my biofeedback program. I'm going to use Plasma, because I love Plasma. And I'll just use the entrainment and healing. Now, entrainment and healing can still be used for killing frequencies. A frequency is, after all, a frequency. 
The Entrainment and Healing Program applies most of the frequencies produced by plasma in one location. It doesn't produce a spectrum of frequencies, which is a range of frequencies. And I want to target it quite precisely. So I'm going to choose the entrainment and healing, even though it might be a pathogen related, related condition. So I double click there. Sorry, I click on there once. <laughs> then I chose my program, which means I double click on the program. Then I click on the control tab, choose a generator to run. I'm going to use the same generator as what I used for the biofeedback because it's already connected onto the plasma unit anyway. So I've loaded it in. What to do now? That's right, start. Now it's actually hard. It's, 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 it sounds more complicated than what it really is. It's harder to explain than actually do. What I've done is I've chosen a preset, load the program in a run. So it's not complicated at all. You can see the estimated total run time is 30 minutes. I'll just sit next to my plasma tube for half an hour. After that, I'll go to the movies. So it's very simple to use. Well, those are the basics behind the usage of the Speaky2 software. You do not need to know about the advanced options. You don't ever need to know the advanced options. If you can load a preset, all these advanced options are set automatically. So all you need to do is choose a preset. If necessary, choose programs and add them to the preset and run it. So that's Spooky in a nutshell, our impromptu summer. It was okay, no questions, that means it it might have meant that I did a fairly good job. Well, thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next week. We're not sure, sure at this stage who it's going to be. In the meantime, keep passing the love forwards. Look after people that can't look after themselves. Keep your blessings hidden. Do good things. Don't announce them to other people. Just keep them to yourself. And you'll find that good things happen in your life. So, on Mid Autumn Festival Day in China, God bless. Goodbye. Have a great week.